and welcome back to Bloomville Home and Garden and we are hanging out with the chickens today in the shade. It is super hot in July and I am going to be answering a burning question about a midsummer's garden. Now I've been getting a lot of messages on my Instagram and my Facebook account and let me just read a couple to you. Um, this one is I love seeing all the pictures of your flowers in your garden on Instagram I'm really bummed that it was too late for me to get my garden started. And another says, when is the best time to plant a garden? This spring really got away from me and I'm really bummed I wasn't able to get some things planted this year. I get a lot of those. And so, let me tell you, it's not too late. First of all, the best piece of information I can share with you is to go to farmersalmanac.com and put in your zip code. That will display for you your zone, your planting growing zone. And then you can Google for your zone the last, scratch that, the first frost date of the season. Now. Typically in the spring when we're planting, we want to know about that last frost date. But now we want to know when the first frost date is. When are our crops at risk for being hit by frost? So, I am in zone 5. I'm in the Midwest. And my first frost date is estimated to be October 4th. So if you are in zone 5, there is still a lot of things you can do. First of all, let's talk about flowers. If you want to plant flowers, there are many places you can get flowers. The garden centers now are having annuals, and annuals are the flowers that are only here for this season, this time of the year, this one year. And they are going on clearance now. So you can get them at bargain deals. You can get entire flats. I just seen some the other day for $7. So it's not too late to plant some annuals. For perennials, garden centers keep them out until the very end of the season because you can plant annuals all the way up to the frost time. Fall is a great time for planting perennials. So you can get perennials. So perennials are the plants that come back year after year after year. Now, you can go to some Facebook groups. Maybe you have some friends who belong to these groups or you can ask or just do a search in Facebook. I belong to several of those groups that help other gardeners throughout the season obtain some plants and they will do chairs, trade, come dig this up. I don't want this anymore. I'm cleaning out. I'm splitting, dividing. And you can get all kinds of perennials that way. Hostas and sedums and salvias and Russian sage and all kinds of plants. So you can wash for that. You can get a lot of plants for free that way. Or you may have family and friends who are willing to divide theirs for you. So the garden center is going to have all of those things available now. And you can get them now at a discount for annuals and sometimes perennials are on sale also but they keep perennials around all the way up to the end of the season now for vegetables depending on your zone and this is why it's important to check out your zone there are still a lot of vegetables that can be planted if you start them indoors from seed right now you will be able to get a lot of benefits from many plants. Now some can be directly seeded outside like root crops, beets and parsnips, rutabagas, all of those things will grow now. Beans are another crop that will grow. And with all the spring rain that we had here in the Midwest, a lot of my seeds were washed away. And so I've recently replanted many things. I've replanted some carrots, I've replanted some rutabaga, I added some parsnips and, um, some of the, the more things like lettuce are, it's a little too hot for, but again, you can plant those later on when it cools off and they will go all the way into fall. So those are just a few vegetables. So is it too late? No, it's definitely not too late to get your gardening on. So let's go over a few basics. If you have not started a garden this year and you really, really wanted to, these are a few basics that I usually cover in the spring, but I'll cover them again right now. So choose your location. Before you start turning over the soil, you wanna to check to see where's the sunshine. I check 
several times a day. I choose a spot, I actually I choose several spots, and I just kind of look at them every day, several times a day to see where is the sun. You want to know how much sunshine you're going to get in that spot throughout the day. Now for things to grow well, you're going to want about six hours of sunshine every day. Now there are specific plants for an area like this. There's a stilby and corabels and hostas love shade, but the fly, there's a fly. It's bugging me. There's a fly. But for a sunny spot, you're going to want around six hours of sunshine a day. And then you want location. Furthermore, in that location, you want to know how far that is away from your water source. Because coming into July and August, it tends to be a little drier and you may have to end up carrying water if you don't have a hose available. So you're going to want to know where your water source is in conjunction with where you want to put your garden. So once you've decided where you have the most sunshine, where your water source is, and this is the spot you want the guard, whether you just want to do some landscaping around the house or go crazy and plant a big cottage garden, have that information. Now the next step is to turn over your soil. Get your soil ready. Now you can use a ground clearer such as Roundup or another brand. Um, if you want to be more natural, you can use vinegar Epsom salts and Dawn dish detergent and you could also put down a tarp over the ground for a couple days and that will kill the grass and that just makes your upcoming garden easier to maintain by getting rid of the grass. Your other option is to simply remove all the sod this deep getting the grass and the roots to be able to easier maintain that garden in the future without having a lot of grass and weeds growing back. So once your site is ready, you're going to turn over your soil either with a fork, a tine, or a rototiller, and you're going to work that soil until it's fine. Now, if you've had a lot of rain, you don't want to work that soil when it's wet because then it clumps up and becomes hard and it's not good to work in and it will be really difficult to plant seeds in or other plants. It, it will not let the water and the nourishment into your plants. So now you've got your site and it's well prepared. Now you're going to amend your soil. You can add in some organic fertilizer. You can add in some compost material just to give your plants an extra boost. And then it's time to plant and plant away. So now that you know you can plant a garden in midsummer, I hope that you will get out there and get planting and share with me in the comments all the things you're gonna plant. Please give this video a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe to that notification bell so that you don't miss any content. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Until then, be blessed and be safe, and I'll see you soon.